Councilor Sharp. Um, Sue, I'm now looking through the document, but um, in reading the uh, the summary of the resolution, there's no mention of London Witty. So London Witty's not there, and Mike, Mike didn't know that when he sent the email right. to you. Okay. Um, okay, so that was pulled. Um, it's too bad we don't have a representative of the CRC here because the, the two questions I would like answered and, and would respectfully ask the president considering sending this, well, just setting it aside one meeting, is number one, given Mr. Bauer's statements at the last meeting that uh, with the settlement with Kreider and Kreider, which they can't afford to pay and have to structure out over 18 months, he said they were going to have to... Um, defer or delay some things in order to stay within budget. So I would like to know, and, and you'll also recall I asked him what the cash position of the CRC was, and he was unable to answer that, and he's going to get back to us on that. Prior to giving this authorization, given the financial difficulty that the CRC has had, I'd like to know, A, that they have the money to pay this professional contract, and maybe more importantly, B, that they have the money to actually affect the physical improvements after the engineering is done. And maybe the acting executive director who's reluctantly, I think, in his position would like to answer. Well, thank you, Mr. Sharp. Mr. Engel King, would you like to respond? Steve Engel King, interim director. Uh, the four contract, uh, the four things that you're considering this evening were approved by the February meeting of the Redevelopment Commission. They are in the budget for this year and affordable. And a copy of that budget was sent to the clerk treasurer's office on Friday for distribution to all of you. Uh, it is on the budget for these to be paid. Um, it also, uh, should they not move forward, uh, perhaps could compromise the project agreement for the MES project that is uh, that they are there to support. I, I understand that, and with your indulgence. Mm -hmm. I understand that, but the whole purpose of the uh, Redevelopment Commission's contracts in this amount being submitted to this fiscal body was because of the fiscal situation that they found themselves in. And, and let me point out for the audience that you were not in any way involved. But So the question is, um, is this a wise expenditure of money if they don't have the money to complete the improvements? And since the treasurer of the body could not tell us what their cash position was, I'm wondering if it isn't prudent to wait two weeks to let that information filter through and make sure we make an informed decision based on numbers as opposed to numbers in terms of dollars as opposed to numbers in a budget. Because the budget of the CRC prior to the need for the bailout restructuring didn't indicate they needed it, but the dollars did. And I'm just trying to be cautious is all. Is two weeks going to be that detrimental to the cause of employing American Structure Point? The, if I may. Mr. Berkeley from Anderson Berkeley visited my office last week and pressed upon me the need to have this work done quickly because of their timing of the building that they are building. You asked one question I am able to answer, and that is about the cash flow vis-a-vis -vis the settlement with Crater. There's enough money in the retainage account that was held back as retainage to to pay these subcontractors to pay Carter and Carter in full. But knowing that we still have the Hagerman issue before us, I suggested, and Mr. Carter agreed to accept over time. So the settlement for this year's budget is coming entirely out of retainage. We should have answered one of your questions. Well, Sorry. it sparks a different question. Um, I thought I understood from uh, the CRC's finance chair that that retainage account included Hageman's retainage. So It does. So, That's what I just said. I said we chose to pay over several years leaving retainage knowing that we had the Hageman issue still in front of us. Right, but the, the implication is that the retainage account was sufficient to pay Kreider. It only is if you take the retainage being held for Hageman, which I don't think we can do until we settle the lawsuit, can we? That's right. Okay. My point was that there's an there's no obligation to pay Hageman at this point. There's been no settlement. The Kreider, you suggested that because Kreider is being paid out of the CRC's budget, 
that there might not be money for this. I'm explaining that no, it's not coming out of the quote budget, it's coming out of the retainage amount that's been put back since the, the time of the construction of the Performing Arts Center. Okay. Just to be fair, I was suggesting, I was repeating what the CRC's finance chair said. So the CRC's finance chair was incorrect in his statement. But we still go back to the fact, do we have the money to do this work? I, I understand the obligation and we want to we want to assist in that, but if the assistance is going to be three months down the road, the city of council city council is approved is approached to pay for it. I think most of us would like to know that now while we're taking the decision, as opposed to a frequent position of our back to the wall, an obligation made of the city and our responsibility to uphold it. And so I go back to my original question, understanding the need for timeliness, will two weeks be such an implement implementation of a hardship? that it will put the commission in a position that it will be in default with Anderson Berkeley. I think it may impact the, the construction scheduling. The, the Redevelopment Commission passed a budget this year based on their revenues. That budget, as I understand it, is fully funded. This is one small piece of that budget of millions of dollars. Okay. If, if we rather than persist in the circle, which isn't doing any of us any good. Uh, if, if it needs to be acted on tonight, then I'll have to vote no, because I have no assurance based on the testimony of the CRC's finance chair as he talked about having to defer and delay. I'm just looking for an assurance that the money's here before we stumble into the commitment. But if the two weeks is that important, then I'll just need to be a dissenting vote because I can't possibly cast a vote on fiscal policy without knowing what the monetary status is. Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Sharp. Um, and, and Councilor Ryder, just one moment. Uh, I, I wanted to clarify something, Mr. Mayor. You had indicated uh, with regard to the retainage fund that um, this year's payments to Crider and Crider will be coming out of the retainage fund. It would not be a budgeted item, if uh, per se. Um, and, but you also said that there's no obligation to pay Hagerman because there's no settlement. But do we not have an obligation to retain a certain amount in the retainage fund, or do we not need to do that? No. So that we have no obligation to retain anything for Hagerman? I do not believe there's a legal obligation, no. Okay, thank you. Councilor, do we have order? order? Uh, sir? At the appropriate time, I just would be interested whether or not the Hagerman contract was in uh, Architects Institute of America's standard contract. We will get to that. Councilor Ryder? I'm trying to see if I missed something. I recall the finance chair saying the same thing from the CRC, but I recall that you just said the money is there to pay for these things. To pay for these contracts, the money is on the budget, yes. And is the money, does that include what will be done with the... I can't the answer that question. Okay, thank you. And Mr. Mayor, would you, can you answer with regard to Councillor Sharp's question about whether or not that was an AIA-approved contract with Hagerman? I don't know. You mean the contract between the uh, construction manager and Hagerman or the city? Manager? I would assume since it would be the city that would be involved in it, that would be between the city and Hagerman. I don't know whether it was a forum. There's many, many forums out there. I don't know whether that one was used or another one was used. Or uh, custom contractors, right? So you, you Six, don't seven know. years ago. You, you don't recall at this point? No. Mr. Sharp? No, I would just make one last comment. Again, I don't want to be the impediment, uh, but I, I don't want to act irresponsibly. Uh, with all due respect to my colleague, Mr. Ryder, you, the, my point is budget versus cash. And I, I keep hearing the response of the budget numbers. I get that. And I know you do. That's not satisfying to me. It's, it's cash to support the budget that's satisfying. And I'm not putting you in a spot because I know you're not in a position to answer that, but I'm not in a position to vote until I know that. I'm understanding the question is, is the money there to pay for the contract beyond the contracts that are before you? In other words, the work to be done. It's twofold. Yes. And, and the money to pay for the contracts that are before you are on a contract that's been approved and are supported by funding to pay them. The the architect and uh, engineering fee contracts that are before you are supportable by funding that is in the budget.
And in the bank. Beg your pardon? And in the bank. Yes. I guess I have to rely on that, then. Well, um, I think it would be fair and reasonable that counsel's representative was able to respond to this as well, uh, that, that sits on the Redevelopment Commission. Now, um, certainly the chair can be overridden, but I think it... Mr. President, may I make a point? If, if I can finish, Mr. Mayor, I, I think it's reasonable that the council is given full and, and fair notice of what the details are and, and, and how this is to be funded, given history. And I don't think that's an un, uh, unreasonable request. I, I also would hope that we don't typically do business where somebody comes into your office less than a week before coming and says we have to have this done, uh, certainly without the rest of council knowing about it, because it's certainly something that we could have discussed and had conversation about and known and had full knowledge about whether or not it was in the budget, it was previously in the budget, because my understanding is, according to the finance chair, that budget changes, which I've, I, I don't understand that process, but that's neither here nor there. Uh, I, I'm certainly uh, agreeing to go ahead and move forward with funding it, but I think it's prudent for this council to make sure that we fully understand so that uh, somebody comes out and asks us, where's the money coming from? What do you mean the money? Somebody said that I was there. Does your representative, who's the finance chair of the Redevelopment Commission, say, yeah, absolutely, we have the money, it's in the, it's in the budget, and we planned on it? Uh, Mr. Mayor. That was exactly my point. I don't think you, your council representative who voted I at the meeting last week had the money not been there. That's his answer to your question. He voted for it. Is there any comments by the council? Councilor Schleife. I think I'd like to make sure that, that we're doing this the right way, and I would like to see us double-check just to make sure. Thanks. Well, uh, at the present time, it seems to me that the prudent thing to do is to at least hold it over for a meeting. And, Mr. Mayor, you, uh, when, when asked the question as to whether or not this would disrupt uh, or put the CRC at risk, you, you indicated that it may cause problems, but there was no definitive answer. And uh, without objection by the council, this will be held over uh, until the time well, I, I think, doesn't that require a vote, Mr. Seinsteiger? It does if somebody asks for one, Mr. Mayor. I'd like to have a vote, Mr. President. Uh, the question is on the uh, decision of the chair to set aside resolution CC-03-17-14-03. Is there a discussion? First of all, is there a second? Yes, thank you. Is there a second to overturn the, uh, overturn the decision of the chair? There is no second. Okay. Councilor Iger, you're seconding? Yes. You're asking for a vote on whether to set it aside or a vote on no. resolution? The, the decision of the chair was to set it aside for one meeting. Right now there is a motion to overturn the uh, decision of the chair, uh, appeal to the decision of the chair. Councilor Finken has made a motion that requires a second. Second. Okay. Uh, the motion right now is to overturn the, the decision of the chair. All comments need to be pertaining to that discussion. Mr. President. Councillor Sharp. Um, the reason I believe the chair needs to be sustained in this is that we're taking a responsible fiscal action. Um, for several years, this body was informed of the solidity of the Redevelopment Commission and the fallacy of our concerns about the finances. That resulted in a $180 plus million dollar refinance by the City of Carmel of that debt. Um, I will never go down that path again. And if we have played our cards so close to the vest that a delay of two weeks calls for the collapse of the project, um, I call that a management problem, and I won't support it. I will support the chair. Thank you. Councillor Snyder. Um, I had made inquiry about this, and um, I didn't realize a discussion was going to come up, or I would have perhaps printed off the emails that were between myself and Mike Lee. I, you asked me. I didn't have a problem with this. Um, I had talked to Dave Bowers, but I didn't have anything in writing. Um, however, it, it's um, of concern to me that enough people on this council are concerned about 
the fiscal health of the CRC. And I am. When I look at the budget, and in fact, I just had it out on Friday, um, at the end of the year, the CRC was going to have, if everything went as projected, $177,000 left in cash. That's a very small amount when you think that the projected TIF income was $19 million, and most of the $19 million goes to pay debt service, and we indeed did uh, restructure their debt, or they would have been uh, totally insolvent and had to declare bankruptcy. I myself would vote for this this evening because I believe I understood from Mike Lee and Mr. Bowers that there was enough money. But um, I'm going to support the chair on this because I think when at least three members of this council, this fiscal body, have concerns, then we need to check it out and make sure that it's right because it's money and it isn't ours. And um, I would like to move this on. I, I understand that Anderson Berkla is as a private developer and that we have projected to do our share of the, what needs to be done to the adjacencies. Nevertheless, um, Mr. Bowers isn't here, and I will support you um, somewhat reluctantly, but I think it's important because we're the fiscal body, and unfortunately the buck stops here. I'll withdraw the second. Let's move on. This item is tabled until the next meeting.